Mulem bebo si. As for me, di mulamu. In case you're wondering, that's how people say hello here in Kakamega. Yes, guys, I am in the heart of the Luya people. Kakamega, this is the home of champions. I am super excited to be here. No, I am Kenyan cocktail, okay? So I'm half Kikuyu, I am two third Luo, and I am a third Luya. So I feel like I'm exploring my Luya side, you know. <laughs> Plus, this is the land of Ingo Ho. You know Luya. If you know Luya, you know what I mean. So I'm super excited. I want to show you that Kenya has a lot to offer. Whenever you think of traveling, you don't just have to always go to Mombasa. Come to Kakamega. I mean, why not? By the end of this video, you'll understand why you should be here because this place has a lot to offer. Morina, this is a Luya word which means hi, how are you doing? I hope you're doing amazing. I'm super excited to be in Luya land. We are in Ilisi, you guys. And in case you don't know it yet, the Luya people are very artistic very creative and today we are in a pottery and i'm gonna be showing you amazing stuff happening here i'm super excited fascinating thing is that it is owned by a woman i like it when women are doing big things you know if it's your first time seeing this drop a comment let me know let me know what you think about this place if you're gonna be impressed but then again how can you not be follow me hello how are you how long has this place been in existence 30 years hey yeah. 30 years are you serious yeah. so basically you're telling me that you guys are making money to educate yourselves you're making a living out of this basically yeah this is impressive so if it has been here for 30 years who was the initial owner i'm not the person who started uh, all our, this our grandfather grandfather no. wait so this is family business yeah. wow that's amazing <gasps> No, he passed on but you guys carried on the legacy yeah. this is amazing so you guys learned how to do this from your grandfather Grandfathers. oh wow that's so beautiful. we continue from there oh that's nice yeah. it's very impressive how many businesses you know are you know taken from the forefathers and brought down to the children sometimes when irresponsible people take over the business it fails but for it to have been here for over 30 years it shows you people are doing a good job yeah so who do you sell these things to who are your customers we have a lot of customers. Uh -huh. Yeah, come from outside of countries. Even and, outside Kenya. Yeah. Outside Are you serious? Kenya, Nairobi, Mombasa, Meru. Oh wow! Even yeah. in Meru. Yeah, we supply them. Wow, I was just in Meru the other day. That's impressive. Yeah. So where do you get this? What this is clay? This clay we buy it. Three type of clay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mix them together, so mm -hmm. that it can be strong, mm -hmm. strong enough okay. for build these pots. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've done part one, now we've come to part two. After they're done making the pots, what happens next? They bring them out to the sun. These things are gonna stay in the sun for about two weeks. Yes, guys, I didn't say two hours, I didn't say two days, I said two weeks. Two weeks so that they can dry up very well. As you can see, this is some of the fresh pots that have been made here, and the color is kind of dull, you know. But after about two weeks, the color goes changing and it becomes brighter. You see, now you have things like this. This is so beautiful, you know. The final process is putting them in fire. This here is called a kiln and um, fire is lit. They lit it using firewood and um, the pots are placed inside where they are supposed to burn for how long? Three days, you guys. This is very interesting. You know, this is actually usually an exam for some people, for some schools, especially in Kenya. Did you do this in your exams? Drop a comment. Let me know. People like Ben. We don't know Ben. Ben's my editor. He actually did this for his KCSE. Don't miss Trudy. We don't just, you know, we're not just joking around. We're not just entertaining you. We are also educating you if you're keen enough this might come in your exam and you'll be like oh i saw it on miss trudy's channel so yeah so the next time you see these things by the roadside at least you'll have an idea of the process behind it and um i hope you're encouraged to support local pure talent they look so good i think i want like five <laughs> a few moments later Guys, oh, 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 so you've come to the crying stone. I'm super excited about this place. I've heard about it. My dad has told me stories about it. It's on books. 
so to get here we had to pay as you see then this money goes to the county government um, because it's a community cultural site this is nice you know that means they're taking care of you know of it so I'll, I'll, I'll catch you guys want to get there guys so you can't come to kakamega and not come to the crying stone in case you don't know it a crying stone is a historical site here in luya land it's actually in the border of the luyas and the nandis um yeah you know this stone is always wet throughout the year it's crazy yet it has no source of water but it's always wet there's always water flowing from the rock hence the name the crying stone and another reason it's called the crying stone is because two communities are actually fighting over it the nandi and the luya people so this is this is very interesting um let's go up and check it out so you have to go up to get to the stone but you're not that far far away oh i can see it it's such a big rock oh my god Guys, so finally we are up here. I've got to tell you, man, like it wasn't easy getting up here. It's so rocky, we had to climb, it's very steep, but nothing is impossible. I'm so happy to be, you know, to be able to touch the crying stone. You know, this is this is a big deal. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. So the articles that came out and they were claiming that the crying stone is dry. But um, guys, it's got water, water is still flowing might not be a lot of water but there's still some water flowing this stone in case you don't know it is always flowing water throughout the year you know during dry or wet seasons it always has water it's such a big rock very you know it's like creatively placed it's like i don't know how do you put it it's like god was just showing how creative he could get when he was making this place which is so cool when you come to kakamega definitely come and see this place you can't come to kakamega and not come to the crying stone are you kidding me this is what shows you are in kakamega fans i have to take instagram photos which reminds me if you're not following me on instagram I beg. many hours later guys so today we are at the nabongo cultural center this is one of the places you should definitely come whenever you come to kakamega First of all, mm. uh, the Luya and the Luo people originated from Uganda. Yes. Oh wow, did you know that you guys? Oh, did you know that Raila Odinga is not Luo? He's actually Luya from the Wanga Kingdom. Raila Odinga, I exposed you. I exposed you. No, Raila is Luya this whole time. I've been thinking he's Luo. <laughs> this is a place where like kings were buried. That's very, very the interesting. Tombs the tombs of the yeah. kings. And here we have a lot of history of kings, yeah. their families, presidents, you know, so much going on inside here. Yeah. It's crazy. Guys, so apparently, in case you didn't know it yet, me and you, but in case you didn't know, Nabongo Mumia had a hundred wives. The most interesting thing about this for me is the fact that the king is usually buried seated after he dies and he's gonna stay like that until it's only the bones left and then he's gonna have the what are you calling that pot with the siphon they put in the siphon into, into, his, into his mouth oh wow yeah. what does that symbolize it, it means that he's still ruling he's still ruling so okay guys now unfortunately the king is dead what happens next the next king needs to take his position so obviously the king is what is the, the prince yeah and when the father dies before the father is buried apparently a bull is brought to the compound this bull is supposed to be speared into the heart okay so the sons if he has like two or three sons they're supposed to spear the cow if that if that, that doesn't happen if it fails then the spirits are not with the with the, with the son so He's not going to take the leadership position but if it happens if he succeeds in spearing the the bull into the heart then that shows he is with the gods he's with the spirits and therefore he takes position as the new king yes. guys guys apparently this was the first flag of east africa yeah and it was called jack yeah union jack Union Jack. Yeah, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. Hey guys, you see this information I'm bringing you? Able subscribe. 
Yo, why was it said in, in yo? This is crazy. But it's not all I used, right? Yeah. When we got independence in 1963, then... Oh, so this was during the colonial yeah. rule. Oh, damn. Okay, interesting. Guys, so I have been showing you the history, the culture, the tradition of the Luya people. I hope you've been enjoying it. I hope you've learned something new just like I have. So behind me is a place where the king's bones are finally brought to rest. As we told you earlier, they are buried, seated. Then after that, after their bones are left, could be even after like, I don't know, 30 years as you were told, they are brought here. This, this, this is very interesting. And we have seen some bees, but you have been told not to touch them, not to hit them because they are of the gods. They are protecting the tombs. So they're not, they don't even, they're not even trying to harm us. You know, they're just chilling. Um, so apparently, Gaddafi has been here before, you know, and he was he wanted to help improve the project, build things like swimming pools, but then apparently, sadly, he went back and they killed him, so it was never to happen. The crazy thing about them, about this place, is whenever the king dies, it's brought down. The new king has to bring it back up. Guys, so this is a typical homestead of the Wanga people. Apparently, this is how their houses used to look like. You can see they are thatched with grass. So the whole like lineage used to like be here from the grandparent to the grandkids. It's, it's very interesting. I love this. Guys, so you've heard of Busa, yeah? In case you haven't, Busa is actually local brew. I've always heard of it, never tried it before, never seen people taking it with my own eyes, but today, today is it. What are you talking about? We brought you directly to these people who actually make them here in the village. This is a traditional drink taken by the Luya community. People just gather. I don't, I don't want to talk too much. Let me just show you. Follow me to this traditional hut. This is so traditional. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. Blow. Guys, I'm super excited. I am having Busa for the first time. This is amazing, man. This is a beautiful culture. Where do I even start? From the pot itself, they've just added some hot water. And then look at the straws. Oh my gosh, this is actually straw. This is a natural straw. It's actually made from stini, like bamboo trees. This is very interesting. And you can see locals here enjoying some Busa. Oh my gosh. What is Busa made from? Only maize and, and millet, isn't it? Um, maize mm -hmm. and millet. Oh, wow. So, Busa is actually made from maize and millet. Did you guys know that? I didn't know. Just drop a comment. Let me know. Have you tried Busa before? Do you love it? So, so this thing is fermented? Yeah. For how, how long? It's just fermented for four days. And it's taken hot? No. Only that hot water is being poured inside because of killing germs. Guys, you see, this is actually very healthy. They add hot water to kill the germs, but this is so nice. I think like locals are coming here to catch up. Oh, I feel so good. I feel like I'm in a beautiful community. So the percentage of alcohol here is about 15 to 20 percent. Not so high. I think it's okay for consumption. What do you guys think? Let me taste it, okay? Me. It wasn't coming out initially. It wasn't, it wasn't coming out. But that, it actually tastes okay. It's for me, it's like porridge, you know? Porridge without sugar. You know, because I don't like alcohol, because alcohol is usually very bitter. This one is not very bitter. It's okay, actually. It's not bitter. Yeah. Guys, so Ben wants to try some busa. You don't even notice it's in your mouth. Exactly. It's kind of like water but heavy and yeah. different. Apparently you also have to shake it as you take it. You don't just pull it, you shake it. But I have a question. I'm wondering where are they? There's no woman here. Where am I the only woman here? Are women allowed to... We normally allow women. 
but nowadays some more of our women don't like it. When you are when you are women in this house, you need to sit down. So they don't like sitting down. Oh, you don't sit on the chair. Mm-hmm. A woman sit on the chair. the knees of the of the husband. Oh, so the woman should sit at the knees of the mm-hmm. husband. Yeah. Oh wow. The chairs. Mm-hmm. And they don't like that, so they prefer not mm-hmm. to come. So that's why there's many men here. Yeah, they are clothed and their choice. Oh, okay. They are right there. My woman, my choice. My best choice. So yeah, that's very interesting, guys. I'm super excited. I won't lie. I think this is the highlight of my day. This is crazy. What do you guys think? Drop a comment and let me know. Thank you. Guys, so I'm outside here. I've been told it's a taboo to touch the straw and not <laughs> and not tip them. So I'm going to tip them. This. <laughs> Guys, here we have Lufobu. So this is traditional way of fence. If someone tries to grab your land, if they touch this, just touching, they die. Don't mess with the Luya people. If you have a Luya neighbor, please just just be peaceful with them. It's not it's our thing. Guys, so with me, I have a plant, a flower. It's called ma- Mazino. Mawinzo. Akiluya names. Akiluya's. Why? Why are you complicating things? Anyway, apparently, I've always loved this plant since I was young. I thought it's so beautiful, the yellow. But I didn't know that it's actually a senol. Apparently, if you pluck it and throw it in your garden or your farm, it's gonna act as a pesticide. And also, it's gonna be manure. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Did you know that? And also, we don't know the English name. So if you do know the English name for this, drop a comment. It's cute. No, you said if you also have a stomach ache and you eat it, it's gonna help you. Wow! Guys, welcome to Mumia Sugar. This is, or at least it used to be, the biggest sugar manufacturing company, not just in Kenya, not just in East Africa, but East and Central Africa. Um, well, now, what happened to it? I don't know. Drop a comment. Let me know. Hey. Yeah, how are you? They're fine. What's your name? My name is Anderson. On social media at Luya Pounds. Twitter. Luya Pounds. Luya Pounds. You got the pounds. You got the money. Yeah, money in the bank. Then <laughs> <laughs> Luya is also black. Okay. You know the Wanga people and Luya is a one thing. And it's where there is not just a Wanga person. This is a prince yeah. directly from the Wanga kingdom. So yeah. I am humbled. Thank you. So tell us about this place. This is Mumia Sugar. Yeah, Mumia Sugar uh, started its wars around 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. We had a director here. He... I think he misappropriated funds here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did things like cabrios for two, three kilometers from the main factory, which was unnecessary. Uh, we sourced out schools like Book Academy to private investors instead of us using it as a company. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of things failed. We had parks here. Wow. We had there is a catch park over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also had other things like. Uh, we had the police station here. Wow. We have the grocery, the hospitals, all those things. It had so much. All those things, like, and, and you know, we a whole community. A whole community, and the houses are more than a thousand. What? We have more than a thousand rental houses. This place here is the managed managed area estate. Wow. This is the the most posh estate in Western Kenya. Whoa! Can we go inside? Yeah, we will go inside. Oh. We will go inside and check out. Okay. Um, we also had a forest. We have a forest down here. What's the name Mumias of the forest? Sugar. It's a Mumias, Mumias forest. Ah. Uh, Mumias sugar was producing also electricity. It's own electricity. So not just These sugar. guys here never paid for KPLC. Oh, wow. They are getting electricity from here. Mumias sugar also was producing ethanol. So we are selling ethanol to these companies that sell liquor around, uh, around Kenya and East Africa. That's crazy. So, so that doesn't big, happen anymore. It was a big thing, but now it's dead. Anymore. As you can see, it's dead. It's what dead. do you guys think? Um, I think the government should, you know, revive this place. I think it was playing a really big role in the community. Yo, it's not just like producing sugar, but it's like a site for people to come and just behold. You know, I don't know. What do you think? But it's gonna be what? It's gonna be fine. I hope so. Yeah, if you're Wanga, if you're Luya, drop a comment. Let us know what you want to see, what you'd like to see happening. You think they should just shut it down and forget it? You think, you know, uh, the government should do something about it? Drop a comment. 
many hours later i had to show you what kakamega looks like at night oh my gosh this place is lit literally okay look at the lights i'm thoroughly impressed apart from the roads you can see that the government is really trying to make this you know this town it's almost like a city man i feel like i'm in nairobi so whenever you're in kakamega lighting at night is not an issue did you know that drop a comment and let me know do you know that kakamega is the second the most populous town in kenya of course after nairobi nairobi has to be the first this place is more developed than i thought the roads ooh, ooh, don't even get me started with the roads the roads in kakamega are just flawless oh my gosh you guys and then something else i've noticed is that it's very clean i'm just it's just a good town you know to be in i'm super excited so yeah if you like this video leave a comment and also let me know what you've heard about people in kakamega for me i know that this is the land of ingoho as in they love chicken <laughs> like no one's business what other rumor or myth or i don't know what do you know what have you heard about the luya people drop a comment let me know